Hey guys, what's up? So welcome to video number two in our React application series. So in this one, we are going to go ahead and set up our React project using Create React App and also define a folder, a folder structure that we'll be using on this application. So first off, you're going to need to have Node.js installed. So Node.js basically will give you NPM, which is a package manager that we'll use to manage our dependencies for the project. So now head over to Node.js.org if you don't have Node.js and then go ahead and install it. Once you install it, you should be able to verify that you have it by running node-p. So you can set I have version 12, and this is the, the long-term support version here. So once you have that, you're going to also have NPM. So if you run NPM V, you can see that we have NPM 6. So with that, now we can create a React project. So we're going to be using NPX. So <laughs> NPX basically allows you to use a module without actually installing it. So instead of us installing Create React App and then using Create React App to create a project, we can use NPX, Create React App, and then we give it an app name. So I'm going to call this one truly contacts frontend. Okay, so once we do that, it's going to go ahead and create a new project and give it this name. And we don't have to install Create React App, so we can use it using NPX. Okay, so it's gonna go ahead and set up all the boilerplate files that we need. So you can see it creates a new React app and then it goes ahead to install dependencies for us to get up and running. Okay, so once it's done, you can see that it goes ahead to give us the starter commands we can use and then they tell us to, to seed into the project and run yarn start. So here I'm gonna seed into the project and then I'm going to run yarn start so if you don't have yarn you can use npm i'm actually going to use npm so npm start and what this is going to do basically it will open up a development server for our project so you can see it opens up port 3000 and then we have basically our basic react app here okay so now now that we have this i'm going to have to open up this project in my code editor so i'm going to be using visual studio code so with Visual Studio Code, you can actually open it from the terminal by, by using code dot. So it's gonna open up this folder, current folder here. So you can see it opens up Visual Studio Code. And if code dot doesn't work for you, please go ahead to open the project from here. So you can open up VS Code, and then you can come to file, then you open the folder from here. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the integrated terminal so that we can just work in the same editor. So here, I'm going to run the server again, so start, so I'm going to use npm start here. Okay, so now, looking at the starter files we have, we have this yarn.log file. Uh, basically, this is used for package management, so package.json and yarn.log, they are basically maintaining our application dependencies. So the node modules, basically that one is caching our dependencies. So in the source, you can see that we have a service worker file. We have a test data file, it's using the testing library, but we won't be getting that in this video. So here, what I'm going to do is basically set up the, fo the folders that we are going to need. So we are going to need a way to easily maintain our assets. So when I say assets, I am talking about the CSS, uh, the images for the project. So here I'm going to create a file, a folder called assets. So inside there, I'm going to have a folder called images. Then if we have like icons, you can also have them there. So for now I'm going to have images and then I'm going to move the, the SVG into that. So from that, I'm going to create a, a folder that will contain our constants. So here, I'm going to create a folder called constants. Uh, we also are going to need to have a, a folder that will contain our con container components. So I'm going to have one called containers. Actually, it should be out here, just in the root, in the source root. Okay, so we are also going to have one that will contain our reusable components. So I'm going to call that one components. Then we are going to have one that will contain our basically our layout. So you can think of what we put in components as those reusable pieces like buttons, like headers, so those things. So in layout, 
So in layout, there we can have a composition of basic HTML page. So that will contain many components. Okay, so once we have those, I'm going to now go ahead and add a folder. Um, so this one is going to be utils. So this should also be in this source. So here we can have like helper fun helper functions that we use. So let's say we have like a function to remove duplicates from an array. We can have it in utils. So I'm also going to set up like um, another folder called helpers. So in here, we can set up like an Axios helper. Okay, so looking good. So once we have that, now you can see that our application has broken because we have moved the logo SVG file. So let's go ahead and fix that. So if you go to app.js, so we have moved the logo into the assets images. So now we are going to need to go to assets images. Oh, so it's slash here dot slash assets slash images slash logo dot svg okay so once we have that now we can see that the application is back it's up and running and yeah so this is the folder we're going to start with so we're also going to be adding one to manage our context so context that will be the application wide state and actually we can go ahead and add it here so to add that i'm going to create a new folder this one is going to be called context so in the context, we are going to be having actions. So basically in the actions, we will have functions that make API calls to the backend. So we will also have one called reducers. So the reducers will be responsible to update our application state from an action that we call from the application or that we dispatch when we make like an API request. So we also have one that will contain like initial state initial states so with context whenever you create a reducer you have to initialize it with an initial state so we will have all our initial states inside there and we are going to have a file so we are going to also have a file to basically provide our application state to other components so this one i'm going to create it actually and call it provider.js okay so we will leave it to that so we'll be adding to this as we go. I also want to create a new folder that will be responsible to manage our routing. So here, I'm going to go ahead and create another one called routes, routes actually. So yeah, so once we have this, we verify that the application is still up and running. So I'm gonna be pausing the video here. In the next one, I'm going to, to come in and we start setting up our React router. So thanks guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.